I need a massage. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm gonna talk about all the books that I read in the month of February and I read eight books in my recovery of top surgery so that's quite a lot. I'm really happy about it. I also read for non-fiction books or like non-fiction-ish books that I'm really happy about because I usually don't read as much non-fiction as I did in this month so I'm really pleased with myself. I also noticed that I pressured myself towards the end to really finish these books and I want to remind you all that it's totally fine to not read any books a month or to not accomplish a certain number of books that you read. It's not about the numbers. And also before we dive into the books, I want to quickly mention that I have a really bad hair day, so that's why I'm, I'm improvising with wearing whatever this is. Anyways, before I talk more about how I don't feel my hair recently, I'm gonna just start with the books that I read in February. And the first book that I'm gonna talk about, I actually think I read it in January, but I don't remember, so I'm gonna include it in this video. And I'm talking about There Are Trans People Here. It is a poetry collection and is centering care, love and trans joy. I really don't remember that much about it so I'm kind of improvising honestly. I wrote down resistance and it honors trans ancestors and it is also about the healing powers of community. Honestly I don't remember much that's why I'm reading off of this sheet here so excuse me. Nevertheless, I gave it four or five stars. It's just sad that I don't remember that much and I think in general it's a really important poetry collection that you should definitely check out if that's what you fancy. Why am I talking like this? And we're gonna continue with the second book that I read in February and that is Our Work is Everywhere, an illustrated oral history of queer and trans resistance. Our Work is Everywhere is a collection of different interviews, essays and poems with a bunch of different people. This book contains a lot of diverse perspectives, people, themes, everything and I really love that. It is also highly illustrated and there's like a lot of artwork that I really like but I have to say that it was sometimes a bit too much from the art and illustration stuff that I couldn't really focus on the writing and it was really a pain in my eyes to read this. Really unfortunate because I think what was written there was really nice and really important. I don't know, I think it was just like for my eyes too much to handle but besides that I really really loved this and there were also like a few pages that I just loved and I also shared them on my Instagram stories. Everything is going wrong today. Now the dogs are barking. Okay, I think I gave this book four stars, mainly because I really struggled reading this and that's really sad. And my first audiobook of February was The Companion and it was so good. I really loved it. It's like historical fiction, romance. Like literally today everything is going wrong. Like my plans are more in focus than my face. Everything is being loud. Everything is distracting me. I don't know what's going on. Something is up in the planets. The Companion. I loved it. To keep it short, I loved it. It is T4T, pearly cottage core vibes everything that I ever needed. The main character is a trans woman and the two love interests is a trans woman and a trans man and mm, I love that. I love T4T romance stuff and I need more. I definitely need more T4T romance in books. Like if it's T4T, give it to me. Also, if you know any other T4T romance stories, Please, I need, I need, I need to read them all. T4T just has my heart. <laughs> Definitely a content notion that there are some sex scenes in the book. So if you don't re want to read that or listen to that, maybe that's not for you. Like this book is maybe not for you. I really enjoyed it. I just wish it was longer. Like I really wanted to have that really emotional build up and I think that was a little bit shorter because this book is really short like 168 pages only like give me more that's my only point where I'm like please I need like a whole long 300 pages novel about this but I, I still gave it five stars 
It literally just has my heart. It has my heart. I'm sold. I'm literally sold. <laughs> the next book that I read is Genderqueer, a memoir. It literally was my Christmas wish list like three years ago, but I never really got it and I never really read it until now. And I, I really liked it. It is a memoir. It is a graphic novel and I gave it five stars. It is really relatable for me. The discovery journey and yeah everything about that was really nice and especially if you're wondering questioning your gender or even if you've already settled in your journey like i think this book is a really nice book to read to skip through if you want and i kind of wish this book would have included a note about jk rowling because it needs an update but besides that i i liked it yeah five stars from me and then i read Daryl, which was also the first book that I started reading after top surgery, but it kind of took me quite a while to finish it, even though it's a really short book. This book is about Daryl, who is a white cis man who likes to watch his wife get fucked by other dudes. And so it is about him and his self-discovery and his journey. I don't know, I thought it sounded interesting, I thought it sounded cool, but it kind of didn't really work that good for me personally. So I gave it three stars. I mean, it was the first book that I started reading after top surgery and like mentally and emotionally I was somewhat completely different. And so just reading about the side character didn't really work that great for me. I think when I read it, I just needed something more wholesome. And this book is not really that wholesome, but I, I still liked it. Now the dogs are howling. Do we have wolves here in this household? Like, what is going on? But yeah, I give it three stars. I don't have anything else to say about this, honestly. The next book was everything. The next book was everything. And I'm talking about We Deserve Monuments. Also, after finishing this, I figured out that it is a debut novel. And I really, I didn't expect that because I liked it so much. It is a queer contemporary YA. And I know that I said last time that I'm maybe out of the YA as a genre. I also realized more and more that I'm kind of growing out of the YA as a whole. But I think I just read the wrong book. I also saw it on Haley's channel discussed before and that's how I got to the book itself and this book is about a queer black girl who is unpacking intergenerational trauma in her family definitely look for trigger warnings before you dive into this because at some points it was really intense I also cried at some point I'm not gonna spoil when but this book really catched me and I was just so invested and that book really fulfilled what i need in a book like i need to be emotionally invested and i literally was so invested in this book i think this book deserves so much more attention i don't know really how to rate this book i mean i gave it five stars and i really enjoyed it but i mean i'm also really reading out of this wide lens and wide perspective and the next book is about a topic that i usually don't talk about on this channel so this is new for me and for you maybe the last two weeks or so i was in a really intense hyper focus about astrology and i've been really interested in astrology like years back like in 2018 or so and now i came back to it and that's why i started reading the essential guide to practical astrology everything from zodiac signs through prediction made easy and entertaining and this is like a big boy this is a huge book and i literally read it in like less than a week like maybe like three days or so or four days i don't know but like i ate this book up and I have to say, for the knowledge that was in this book and for what I learned about astrology from this book particularly, I really enjoyed this. But if I read it only of the astrology aspect of the book, then I really, really liked it. I gave it five stars. Like, I knew the basis of the basis. And so I think it's, like, good to know that before. But I think this is also just really for anyone who is a little bit as interested in astrology. I also really love that it includes like the moon cycles and stuff. And so I think it's a really, really solid start to dive into astrology. Yeah, I also discovered the astrology podcast. I know it's not about podcasts or stuff, but I just wanted to mention this podcast because when it comes to astrology, this podcast has been really helpful to my learning curve. And 
the last book was Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origin of Fat Phobia. It is a nonfiction that includes a lot of history. And as the title already suggests, this book is about how fat phobia originated from anti-black racism. I think I could learn a lot from this book and I think especially when it comes to like internalized fat phobia and to know where it's stemming from and to know who created it and why it was created and that fat phobia is so connected to white supremacy and stuff and so based on the information stuff and based on the importance of the book i give this book five stars i sometimes struggle to rate nonfiction books because i'm like it is not my place to rate them like the information in them that i read is like needed to be read i literally don't know what i'm saying anymore but like i would really recommend everyone to check this book out I don't know, I think knowing the history of fat phobia is so, so, so important. Here's your official reminder to drink some water, as I'm gonna do it now. Okay, I think that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I think we'll see each other next time. I think that would sound good, right? Okay, bye bye. Oh, sorry. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.